This is Leo of Leo and Luke. Are you there, Luke? I am. I'm hearing you loud and clear. Well, as loud and clear as we can be on the um, UK phone network. Lovely, networks. lovely. So, we're doing a couple of conversations about the Intel 12th Gen Alder Lake launch, and we are agreed that the Core i9 is impressive and the Core i5 is an absolute jewel. A verdict on Core i7 to be delivered in the near future. So that's it. It's game over for AMD. AMD is going to rest on their laurels. They've got nothing in the pipeline. They're doomed, right? Wrong. <laughs> no. Oh I, no! I, I, Tell me more, Luke. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm doing the fishing rod sign at this point, and I'm reeling you in because that was a very clever intro there, Leo. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in all seriousness, so yeah, Intel has suddenly and quickly become competitive once again, as in highly competitive once again, as we've discussed. But does that spell the real realistic start of trouble for AMD? Well, perhaps not. I mean, there's a lot they can do currently. But just around the corner, we've got Zen with 3D cache. And that looks like it is going to be a thing and perhaps a pretty promising thing. So that's OK. So we've got uh, Zen 3 on the desktop uh, and we're referring to this, I believe, as Zen 3D, aren't we? I don't know what the official name is. They did have a talk no, no, earlier no. this week, we're, didn't they? We're referring to it. Sorry to cut across. We're referring to it as Zen 3D because we don't have an official name. Yeah, okay. Let's go with that. Let's go with 3D. Yeah, Zen 3D. Okay. I'll, I'll forget so that, that in about is... five seconds, but we'll try. <laughs> so, so that's uh, the existing Zen 3 architecture on AM4 with DDR4 and the big change being what? 3D cache, basically. So it's using the... Um, it's called TSV, isn't it? The Through Silicon Vias, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And it's basically, I think Lisa, Dr. Lisa Sue gave more information this week about it, but we already kind of knew it's somewhat of a collaboration between AMD and TSMC. But basically, it stacks um, 3D, or depending on your preference, 2.5D perhaps, cache onto the CPU that gives you copious amounts of level 3 cache, which, as we saw with Zen 3 versus Zen 2, which was a big improvement for cache, can help in scenarios such as gaming. So that will be interesting to see. And the recent event you spoke at, he says turning to his iPad, was the accelerated data premiere. Yes, uh, it was. What did, what did she talk about there? So, of course, that one was more focused towards the data center side of things. So they were talking about the, if it, off the top of my head, I think the MI200, the accelerators on the GPU side of things for, you know, AI and general purpose compute on the GPU side of things. But there was also talk of the Zen side of things, of course, for Epic. So talking about yep. 3D cache there. I can't remember the number off the top of my head. It was something like 768 megabytes or maybe higher of level 3 cache on one of the Epic CPUs, which is um, obscene, like as in literally obscene. That's level 3 cache, never mind system memory. Cache, almost, almost well, a, gig, a gigabyte. That's, that's crazy. Well, well a, you're saying you can't remember the number. I'm literally looking at the slide as you're speaking and I can't see a number. What I can read is AMD previewed the use of an innovative 3D chiplet packaging technology in the data center with the first server CPU using high performance 3D die stacking, the third gen AMD Epic processors uh, with AMD 3D vCache, codenamed Milan X. Yep. That represents an innovative step forward in blah, blah, blah. And will offer a 50% average performance uplift, and you pause for breath, across targeted technical computing workloads, and then there's a link to a footnote. And you go, okay. But the idea, obviously, of this um, 3D vCache is you'd expect it to be a win with no losses, wouldn't you? When it works, it works, and when it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you would expect that to be the case, because... Yeah, it's basically more cache. Now, of course, it's probably going to be higher latency for the 3D section, but if you're not going into the 3D section, then perhaps it's going to be, like you say, no loss. It, it just I can't see how it can necessarily be detrimental unless you have some kind of software issues or bugs, for example. But yeah, it looks like a convincing upgrade. And then the, uh, uh, at this event, as you say, Data Center went on to talk about Zen 4-powered data centers and Genoa and Bergamo. 
I don't know if you yep. pronounce it as Bergama or Bergama, uh, which is this up to 128 cores of data and stuff. But that's the future. On the desktop, what are you expecting AMD to do in the uh, foreseeable future on AM4? Well, the first thing is going to be the 3D cache, isn't it? That's going to be on AM4, it looks like, and I would imagine that's the turn of the year. So we did have the uh, the call, AMD did a call for this a few months ago, didn't they? And did say that they were going to be production and sampling in, I think it was December or before the end of the year, which was the implication was December 2021. Mm -hmm. That's looking like kind of turn of the year now, which will be cool to see. But you'd say that perhaps is going to be the fight back or the initial fight back, um, as well as price drops and current stuff, versus the Intel 12th gen competitors. And the reason I think that's quite interesting from AMD is because previously we've seen um, Intel and AMD battling out on kind of cores and architecture versus um, clocks, basically, isn't it? So Intel have been very good with the clocks. AMD have given you more cores and then have finessed their architecture to the point where Zen 3 realistically was an improvement versus Skylake base. Now it almost seems like their paths are diverging a bit, whereas Intel's going for this big little approach, AMD's going for a stack in the cache. So they are going down different routes, which I think is increasingly interesting versus what we've seen previously. And that's pretty exciting, in my opinion. So the 3D cache clearly is a packaging thing, as you say, therefore it's TSMC's technology, in essence, um, using an existing design from uh, AMD. Intel obviously has also been talking about packaging big time Foveros and such like. Uh, yeah. I don't actually know how much packaging, clever packaging there is going on inside 12th gen order lake. I get the impression not a phenomenal amount. There's obviously interconnects and such like, and they've put together different uh, cores on the same package. But Intel in this 12th gen hasn't really majored on packaging in my opinion. With Sapphire Rapids, the server chip, there's a huge amount of packaging. Ponte Vecchio is vast amounts of packaging, but on the desktop, not so much, it doesn't seem to me. Uh, so AMD, in a sense, is being the first on the desktop to push in that direction. Intel, we know, is doing it, just not in our little world at the moment so much. Yeah, and I think that that really does emphasise the, uh, the, the paths for both of the companies at the moment, whereas Intel is still, in some respects, going for the monolithic approach and the specialised approach where we'll give you a specialised chip for consumer and a somewhat specialised chip for mobile, as in laptops, and a somewhat specialised mm. chip for data centre, for servers, and for different um, uh, compute applications. Whereas AMD, as we've seen previously, is ob obviously building up a generic core, which can be scaled out um, for consumers, or for mobile, or for the data centre, but it's still fundamentally the same core underneath. And again, this is just the divergent approaches that we've seen between the two. Obviously, there's no right and wrong approach. I mean, the market might tell you different, but in certain scenarios, it's just interesting to see how they're diverging. Well, also, you, you, you said quite correctly that up to now, AM, uh, Intel's gone down the higher clock speed and AMD the lower clock speed. It was relatively recently, essentially, Intel was at 5 gigahertz on the performance parts and AMD was at 4 gigahertz. That's no yeah. longer true. I mean, AMD, uh, depending on the processor and the, and the workload, is, what, 4.4 .4 to 4.5 gigahertz, uh, whereas yeah. Intel... When they have their 5.3, I mean, yeah, right. Um, uh, you really are talking about how many cores have you got running at 4.9 or maybe 5. Pushing all the cores beyond 5 is beyond yeah. diminishing returns. So th the differential in clock speed is not huge. Uh, not anymore. 15%, no. call it 15%, something in that territory. Yeah. Which means, obviously, if Intel... Uh, and AMD have similar core counts, then that's interesting. But of course, the new Intel stuff has two clock speeds. Yeah, which is, yeah, which throws another spanner and piece of, um, I don't want to say confusion, but another piece of interest into the works. So like you say, yeah, with Zen 3 in particular, AMD really did close the gap uh, for the frequency. And then now, as we've seen with 12th gen, when Intel gone to mm. a smaller process node, they've had to accept a reduction in real frequency, in all honesty, haven't they? Oh, sure. And, and I mean, the, the thing of what speeds your processor run at, that's not been a straightforward answer for a good long while. But now with Intel, yeah. it's like, well, which part of the process are doing what? I mean, yeah, you have precisely. literally two different numbers. But um, if over the next few generations, if Intel pulls back, uh, let's say their performance cores drop to four performance cores, 
and the efficient cause increased to 32, for argument's sake. I mean, a la phone, mobile, you know, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's not unreasonable, particularly for laptops. Fewer performance cores, more efficient cores, at which point they really are looking more like AMD at that stage. Yeah, it is. And that's an interesting point, because like you say, with this um, uh, suggestion or with this highlighting of Zen 4 by Dr. Lisa Su um, in the conference this week, there was a highlight how Zen 4, I believe, was going to be 96 cores nominally in DDR5 and PCIe Gen mm. 5 and all and CXL mm. and all this and that. But then there was an additional one where it was Zen 4, if I remember correctly, Zen 4C, where they said, actually, now this is a slightly different tweak to the processor that's specifically mm. built for core dense applications so such as cloud hyperscalers and that's mm. going to give you up to 128 cores so it's kind of coming back to what you're saying where actually yeah you can take away a few of your performance your really high performance cores and squeeze in many of those low performance cores where you need that parallelization or you need virtualization for example so yeah like i say they're diverging but there's still many similarities in many respects just in different segments mm. at the moment I mean, the data center stuff is of uh, is, is not our world, but, but if they actually have a fork in the technologies and the approach even, I mean, at the moment you can look at Epic and you can look at Threadripper and you can see, it's like, right, well, it, it's that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, it looks like the fork for the, as you said, hyperscalers and the cloud stuff is going to be a huge number of cores, presumably running at lower speeds, uh, because otherwise the power is just enormous. And yeah. then, of course, Apple is... Uh, uh, talking about that they're, they're going to have their own server chips, uh, presumably in the first instance for themselves, and then you'd imagine they'll be selling the blooming things. Apple uh, is so an interesting one. They are mm. the um, they are the, the the gray person, if you like, in this whole debate because obviously we get hung up on debating Intel, AMD, Nvidia, mm. obviously Nvidia on the graphic side of things, more so Nvidia on the uh, compute side of things. Actually, with uh, was it Grace? I think was the um, yes was the one they mentioned. But yeah, yeah. Apple. As we've seen with the M1 and the the most recent MacBook MacBook Pros, they cannot be underestimated for much longer because they are doing perhaps what none of us wow. really expected. To be perfectly honest, well, well Apple, it's it's that thing of I uh, the, when they went to their own silicon, it was no surprise to me at all that the MacBook Air worked well because essentially the design had been done for their own silicon and the Intel side of things let it down badly. It was crystal clear. Um, hot processor in in a sealed chassis uh, so that made perfect sense and in my mind it's like well when they get around to doing the macbook pro and we'll see how that goes ho ho because that'll take a while and they nailed it first boom in time so now it's like okay when does the imac uh an imac pro rather go down their own silicon route when then does the mac pro go down their own route and you think well any day now, practically. Yeah, because it is a natural progression, to be perfectly fair. I remember you mm. saying to us a few months ago, you mentioned a few months ago, yeah, it's only a matter of time before the iMac Pro and, you know, the desktop side of things. And I kind of had in the back of my head, like, yeah, whatever. Whereas, actually, you mm. see the performance on the chips on the laptops, and you think, yeah, you weren't wrong. You absolutely were not wrong. But I thought it would be a while. It was the obvious progression, and it was like, this is the way they're going but you know the kind of the assuming it's technically feasible which for a while i thought oh, is it it will be in time but when and it's like okay we're talking years out okay now we're talking a few years out actually and if they're to do it in the next generation now I, I wouldn't be shocked but yeah rewind two years and i'll be talking at least five years for argument's sake uh, this... so go on sorry yeah no 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 no. i was just going to say so apple ain't hanging around so no. Intel and AMD can't hang around. This, but this re-emphasizes the point that we've mentioned many, many times in the past. It highlights the power of TSMC. And I know we're slightly going off topic here, but it really does. Because if Apple had mm. to design their chips and do everything they're doing, and then build a fab which was competent and could deliver these chips, mm. even for a company of Apple, you would say that would be incredibly tough. If they can design mm. competent chips and say to TSMC, which right now is the world's best fab. They, they, they simply are. They're the world's mm. best chip maker. Um, I know Intel will debate that and Samsung might debate that, but TSMC the best. If they then hand around and say, there you go, you guys take care of manufacturing, it gives them so much more ability to be able to do their own thing because they don't have to worry about all the stresses of actually making it. That's somebody else's job. Same with AMD. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, quite. And obviously Apple is hugely important to TSMC, so... 
it's it's very much a uh, um, symbiotic relationship uh, and therefore TSMC clearly will go just as far as they can possibly go for Apple without a shadow of a doubt and then a generation later other uh, AMD and such like get the, the same technologies uh, so we're expecting I believe that the 3D cache uh, desktop parts um, on Zen 3 on AM4 with DDR4 will run alongside the existing Zen 3 parts. That might be incorrect, but we're expecting it to be like an X factor part, an extra part. Yeah. Uh, when do you think? So are we are we thinking we might see those at uh, CES? I I would think so, and I would hope so. To be perfectly honest, yeah, I would have said Q1. I would I would hope Q1. Mm. And again, I have no information, no knowledge. Um, yeah, CES would be the logical point. And we've seen previously that CES and Computex, even though AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, whoever, they have the power to do whatever they want, whenever they want, CES and Computex still hold weight to them, and they do adjust some of their schedules based on those events, it seems. And given that uh, Threadripper 5000 for the desktop appears to be uh, dead, um, because Threadripper 3000 doesn't have any competition, Intel Hind desktop is nothing. So uh, a new Threadripper would be nice but unnecessary. However, yeah. we hear there's new Threadripper Pro coming, so that's a bit of a shame. But on the desktop, Intel with 12th Gen is forcing AMD. Even if, if AMD wasn't sure whether they should do 3D cache or not, they have to. They have to. They have to do something different to fight back. Because, like we like we've said in some of the other videos, yeah, you know, there are competent, there are perfectly valid cases to go Intel or AMD at this point. Mm. Now, versus kind of a month ago, far more cases to go Intel than there was a month ago. But yes, AMD mm. has to hit back. They they have to. And and just on the Threadripper point, I really I really hope we do see Threadripper five thousand to consumers, because like you say, they've got no competition. But remember who we said that about five years ago because they had no yep. competition, so they didn't have yep. to accelerate things, they didn't have to push forward. And it's like, yeah, they have no competition until they start competing with themselves, because someone whose mm. IT department has just said, oh, we need you to work a bit faster, we've got £15,000 for you and your colleague to spend on a new PC, they can't buy the new Threadripper chip. So what are they going to mm. do? They're going to spend their money elsewhere. So the competition is themselves, like we saw from Intel mm. all those years ago. And you can't get complacent in this market. That's not to say that AMD are or will, but that's just me saying, please bring out Threadripper 5000. I want to see it. I really do. I want, no, I do. I want to see it. No, a very good note to end on. Right, that's it. That wraps this one up. So it's goodbye from Leo. Adios from Luke. <laughs> and we'll catch you in the next one.